The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't yet viewed the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, attribute values are characteristics about data that can be linked to sources or cases. In this video, we show you what attribute values look like and where they are stored, and we show you how to group components on the basis of attribute values and how to interrogate data by comparing attribute values. Attribute values are not stored together anywhere in the navigational area, but are associated with classifications. To see attribute values, therefore, we need to open a classification sheet. I'm going to open this case classification sheet that relates to the socio-demographic information about the respondents in this study. Each row in this classification sheet represents a case or a respondent. Each column represents a socio-demographic characteristic. These are called attributes in NVivo and are also listed on the left below the classification itself. The attribute values are within each cell of the classification sheet and they can be changed at any time if necessary. Let's go and have a look at a source classification sheet. This one relates to the literature that's being reviewed as part of this study. In this instance, each row relates to a source which captures a piece of literature and each column is one of the factual metadata characteristics about the articles. Again, they can be changed as required. Deciding whether to link attribute values to sources or cases revolves around the purpose of the analytic task and the unit that's being classified through the use of attribute values. I've written a blog post on the Five Level QDA website that discusses this in much more detail, describing the thinking involved in making the choice between using source classifications or case classifications, which essentially revolves around whether the unit you need to classify is equivalent to a whole source in your project or not. As we've seen, we link attribute values to either sources or cases via classification sheets. And we can create classification sheets either manually or by importing the information from a spreadsheet. Once this factual organisation has been accomplished, we can interrogate the data according to the presence of attribute values. This can happen in several ways. For example, we can find cases or sources according to the presence of an individual attribute value or a combination of them. The advanced find tool will allow us to do that. So I'm just going to open that up now so that we can have a quick look. What I can do is first of all ask to add to the project a search folder the result of this search. And then in the search criteria tab, I'm going to ask Envivo to find sources which have a particular attribute value applied to them. I'll do that down here by asking for classified items where a particular attribute is present. Hitting the select button allows me to choose the attribute that I want. In this case, I'm going to choose relevance and then specify the value that I'm interested in. I'm going to go for essential here and then I'm going to hit the apply button. And what that will do is it creates a new search folder in my project called articles to read again, in which are shortcuts to the three articles in my project, which I had applied the attribute value essential to. Using the advanced find tool, I could find sources or cases also based on combinations of attribute values. So for example, if I was interested in working with my cases and I wanted to find all the female English respondents who were also 15, then I could use an advanced find for that purpose too. We can also use attribute values in queries. Here, I'm just going to show you the result of a query that has used attribute values. It's a matrix query 
which allows us to compare several things with several other things. I'm just going to open up the result of this query and just talk you through it very briefly. Each row in this matrix query result is a node that has been used to apply to the transcripts in the project. And each column represents one of the attribute values that I'm interested in. In this example, we're comparing how the English and Dutch respondents have been coded as talking about all of these individual nodes that represent the concepts which are interesting in the project. At this stage of the project, not that much coding has been achieved, which is why the numbers are relatively low. But hopefully you can see how attribute values can be useful in order to make comparisons about your data. We discuss matrix queries further in the video about queries.